Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're looking at the Gank Multi-Rotors Nemesis Micro V2. This is the three inch version. It's running the Fox here Digisite Shark Bite Cam and the 200 milliwatt Shark Bite Whoop VTX. For motors, we're running the Beta FPV 1404 3800 KV, HQ T mount 3x2 inch props. I've got some URUAV sticky battery mat. For the antenna, we're running the True RC Singularity. And I am running the capacitor. For the flight controller, I'm running the CL Racing F7 20 amp V1 board. And for the RX, we're running a Crossfire Nano. If you've been tuning in my channel recently, you have seen me post a couple of videos here on the Gate Nemesis Micro. Um, but I wanted to get a few more packs in before I got this review out to you guys. So. Uh, we could get a good represent, representation there. So um, I was looking for a frame uh, to build up. Um, I previously had purchased the Flywheel Explorer LR frame. I was going to do a build with that. Um, and I picked up the iFlight Chimera instead. So I still had some uh, parts uh, that I needed to build up. Uh, generally, I like freestyle frames. And I've seen a few people on Facebook post about this frame. And uh, so it's a freestyle frame, three inch. Uh, they do make a 2.5 inch version. Um, I'll post a link here in the video description there for you to check it out. It's a Gank Multi-Rotors. Uh, he's got a lot of uh, freestyle frames, uh, full size five and six inch frames, as well as a few race frames. Um, but uh, this is a, a micro that caught my eye. That's generally what I fly is micros. So, um, yeah, it's uh, the lure to this frame for me was it's got a top mount battery. Um, I was running these uh, Tattoo 4S uh, 450s. All right, so the dry weight. Coming in about, uh, looks like a 110, 111 grams roughly. And with the LiPo, uh, looks like we're coming in at 166.1 grams. So well under the two, 250 limit there, if that's a thing for you. Um, and I want to build this up digital. Um, as you know, I went with SharkBite instead of uh, DJI for my uh, HD system. I've been pretty impressed with the results there. Um, but once I got the antenna combination sorted out there on this specific build, as well as my Mutant, I'm running the uh, TrueRC Singularity antenna. And uh, you know, I don't think I'll go with anything else but TrueRC uh, on these uh, Shark Bite builds. Uh, it's a lightweight antenna. I did whip up this uh, mount. I'll post a link in the video description as well. Um, Matt Gankman, the designer, uh, he does have a lot of files that you can pick up on Thingiverse. Uh, check out his uh, profile. Uh, he does have these um, arm guards and as well as he has some uh, wire covers that you could print off as well. I believe he also offers the camera mount um, you can purchase these with the kit, uh, but I purchased uh, just the basic kit there, uh, the three inch version, and then I printed these off in Soltec Blue uh, TPU. His mount is for a lollipop antenna. I had the singularity and I wanted to get a 45 degree angle there. So uh, the antenna is angled up there. Um, so you get that maximum reception there. Um, Let's get into the build here. So I am running the CL Racing uh, F7 whoop board. This is the V1 board. As you can tell, it is larger than the typical, was it 25 by 25 whoop board? It does stick out. That's not a problem on this frame. You can run a whoop board, a 16 by 16 or a 20 by 20 stack. 
Now he did say that if you run a 20 by 20 stack, that you may have some clearance uh, problems there. Um, but I've been running these whoop boards uh, with success there. So that's just what I wanted to go with. This, like I said, this is a 20 amp. Um, you will note the, the motor pads are large. And it was very easy to solder. This one is specifically set up for TBS products. It has a direct solder for the Crossfire Nano as well as the um, Pro, Unify Pro 32 Nano. Um, so if you're a TBS person, uh, I run TBS products, but like I said, I was building this one digital. Um, so uh, there was a caveat to that. You pretty much do have the only one UART here. You do have a plug on the board um, I did have to remove that. Um, I slammed the board as low as I can, as you can see. Um, there is pretty much just the uh, the rubber gummy underneath there. Um, and then I have a uh, nut, uh, nut on top of that. And then I've got the whoop board on top of that there. So to get the uh, maximum clearance available uh, because uh, it's, on these larger nano cameras, Digicide included, um, there's not a whole lot of clearance. And as you can see, there is barely any clearance there, but I can get the angle that I want to fly at. I can even get more angle. Um, so yeah, I got that sorted out. I have seen people flip the camera. <laughs> I'll post. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty scary there. There's like no camera protection. I thought about doing like a, a racer style um, camera TPU protector there on the front, but I was able to get the camera flipped back uh, when I slammed the board there. So I've got plenty of room in there. Now I didn't direct solder the Crossfire Nano. There's pads up back here in the back. Um, I do have the cable running here. This is the one that ships with the Digisite. So it's already attached there on the back, but I did go ahead and put a loop in the cable so it's not exposed. That seems to work, be working out good. You got the Crossfire Nano sitting up here up top. Um, this is running a capacitor here. Probably should secure this a little bit better here, but it, it's fitting pretty good right here. I just have some leads running that and I have that running directly off uh, the VBAT there. So you definitely wanna run a uh, the capacitor um, if you're running the shark bite boards. So they, they do state that in the manual and I have seen people blow those. So, um, they're about $50. So I definitely don't want to blow that. So I did run the capacitor up there. Um, and like I said, I've got this, uh, antenna mount there that I whipped up. Uh, I'll post the thing of verse link there for you. You can check that out. And we're running an XT30 here. Um, these are, like I said, the 1404 3800 KV. Um, they're a little bit wide, um, but with these motor protectors here, I'm only running two screws here, but uh, they seem to give you a little bit of coverage there. Um, so this won't chew up your carbon there. I think the carbon is, uh, I believe it's gonna be a three millimeter thick bottom plate there. Uh, it's a unibody. Um, that always saves weight there. So, um, but yeah, I believe that's going to be, let's get a, yeah, three mils thick. So, uh, it's a pretty stiff frame. Um, didn't notice any issues there with it. The, uh, whip antenna, uh, on the Crossfire Nano. Uh, I seem to get much better range. You get pretty much full range out of those, just like you would on an Immortal T, uh, but they're light. Um, the regular Crossfire is only, or Nano is only $25. I think you pay about $30 for the SE that comes with the Immortal T, but this one's lighter, cheaper, and you get the same range. So there's really, uh, for a micro, there's no negatives to run the, the uh, just the regular Crossfire Nano. This one only has the one open UART 
for, for the Crossfire, for the RX or whatever RX you want to run. And um, you do have a camera control pad, which I believe you can't remap. You've got a video in for the camera. Um, and then you have a smart audio, like a TX pad. So um, pretty much my only way to go ahead and get this working was to have no OSD. So on the Shark Bike uh, VTX is there, you're gonna have a power and ground, which you solder directly to VBAT. And then you're gonna have a TX and an RX, which go to the opposite on the board. So if you ever have a problem there, you're not getting OSD and you do have it soldered directly to the board, you just need to flip flop those. So TX goes to RX and RX goes to TX respectively there. And that'll get the OSD work in there. What I normally do on these uh, Shark Bite BTXs is I set the low power mode. So no matter what setting you have, it's, it's only 25 and 200 milliwatt. Um, if you set it to low power mode, it will stay in 25 milliwatt um, until it's armed. And then when it arms, it'll go to the full 200 milliwatt. But since I don't have this connected to the flight controller, the VTX does not know when it's armed. So initially I was getting, you know, not so hot a range and the reason why was because it was staying at 25 milliwatt. I mean, this will do decent on 25 milliwatt, probably further than analog, but um, you definitely want to get that full full 200 milliwatt. So I just disabled low power mode. Now that does start up at 200 milliwatts, just like just like with an analog VTX where you can set low power mode, but you don't get that annoying flash there. So when you arm, you get the you know the static, and then it, it goes back to your video. On the digital VTX, it just, you, you keep video the whole time there. Um, I did run some of this um, Umagrip style. It's a URUAV battery pad, works great. I think I got a big pack of that for about $10, so can't go wrong with that. Got the Talon battery strap here. Now, so, uh, the main thing, yeah, I want to touch on is no OSD. So, you know, if you've been flying for a while, uh, you may be familiar with the times where we didn't have OSD with a flight controller. You can get in your goggles there. Well, I've not been flying that long, so I'm used to OSD. Most importantly, um, I use the timer, timer two, which is your run timer. And then, um, I use a battery voltage. I use average cell voltage. Um, so what I did is I had to set up some OpenTX callouts on my Tango 2. Uh, I'll post a link up here in the video description. I did a video on that. Um, and that's been working out flawlessly for me there. So if you haven't taken a look at how to do that, definitely check that video out. Um, Cause if you are running a telemetry receiver, just like the Crossfire Nano, I mean, you're not fully utilizing every, all the features there. Now, if you're going far out, I mean, Trappy said this before, you're not gonna get telemetry for the range of Crossfire, but I mean, uh, with 200 milliwatts, I mean, I can get out pretty far. I can probably get out about, about a half mile. Easy, probably, if clear line of sight, I can probably get out further, but for where I fly, I don't really fly further than that. Most of the time it's closer than that. So I don't really lose telemetry at that point. That helps. So OSD is not essential. Plus SharkBite records the OSD, which it's not a big deal, but I mean, the footage looks cleaner without the OSD overlay. So not a big problem at all. Um, with this uh, 454S, um, I'm getting about six and a half minutes and that's not casual flight. I could definitely get way more than that. That's pretty much how I normally fly. Um, well over six minutes anyway. Um, this is a 32-bit ESC, so it does run natively run RPM filtering. I do have it cranked down to uh, 48 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz there, PWM. So uh, it's really been 
uh, game changer there for those longer flight times. There, it's very efficient. Definitely not lacking on power there. I haven't tried a tri-blade on this one. I just had these three by two HQs laying around and I threw them on there. I like the way it sounds. Uh, it hangs tight in the turns. Um, it, you can definitely throw it. Um, it's just a great all around frame. Only thing I would change, like I said, um, and I believe he's gonna offer a digital version. So for those of you that, uh, if you're running DJI, you're gonna wanna, you can probably shove a Vista in here. Um, but like I said, you may have to use taller standoffs, but he's gonna make a new version. I heard that it's coming out there. So it's specifically made for digital. So even with the shark bite and those other you know, camera clearance issues there, that should address those. Um, so if you're thinking about a fun top mount uh, battery a micro frame, this is definitely a win. I can't really speak for the durability because I haven't really crashed it. I don't really fly over concrete much. I mostly fly over grass. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have an issue there with durability there. Um, it's a lot of fun, got a lot of power. I have seen some other guys run some pretty big motors. I thought I was running pretty big motors with these 1404s, but I think I've seen people run like 1408s or even larger motors. And uh, for me, I, you know, I definitely didn't need that for this weight. I think it was like, what, below 170 all up weight. I mean, these 1404s just have loads, gobs of power. They're in control. So um, very efficient. Um, just just an all around good quad there. So um, if you want to get some better footage there, um, you definitely could put an Insta360 Go on this. You could probably, um, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to run a naked GoPro on this as well. Um, like I said, I have plenty of power to spare there with these motors. And then I'll post my rates and my PIDs on the screen there for you. Um, I am running RPM filtering there. Just with the uh, default firmware, um, I've got a video coming up there. We're going to take a look at the Bluebird uh, ESC firmware. I'm running that on a, a couple of my Whoops. Uh, I've been getting great results out of that. So uh, if you want an alternative for Jazz Mavericks or Bill Helium or J, uh, JESC, um, that Bluebird firmware was working out pretty well. And like I said, I'm going to do a video shortly on that one. So be looking for that. Um, it's definitely a win. I believe this frame is about, uh, I think it was $26 uh, for the one without the TPU. And I think you're looking at about 31 It's about $5 more if you want the TPU parts there. But like I said, uh, Matt does have the files uh, on Thingiverse. And, you know, you can print them yourself if you got your own printer. And like I said, I'll post a link to the uh, antenna mount uh, for you guys there. I don't know if there's an Insta360 Go mount. I'm sure there is. So um, if you got any questions there, please leave them in the comments. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you're not already. Uh, we got awesome new content coming out all the time, guys. I appreciate you. Like I said, that's one reason why I do this, to give back to the community there. Uh, we just love this hobby, and uh, a lot of people are coming into it, and uh, I just want to share that love. So, like I said, thanks again for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next one.